What's going on there, guys? Good afternoon. It is the uh, Earthmaster here on the live stream. Hope everyone's having a beautiful Friday, end of the work week. It is October 29th, 2021. It's a date about 4, no, 3.41 p.m. California time. Latest quake on the Earthquake 3D globe. It's a 2.7 earthquake into the Northern California region. Checking out the latest information on the USGS map here. Shows that 2.7 earthquake up there in Northern California, or I should say right here in Northern California, because it's kind of where I'm at. East Quincy at 2.7. This one's pretty shallow up there. They got it marked at negative 1.5. Of course, we got, uh, let's see what we got up there. Just a whole lot of mountains, right? The Sierra Nevadas. Lassen Peak well up here to the north, not associated with the volcano up there. Uh, but this one here, just uh, 2.7 east of Quincy. The latest quake on the uh, the map right there, looking at the all magnitudes, doesn't show too much more in the way of earthquake activity in Northern California. Uh, in fact, not a whole lot into the Pacific Northwest either. Some movement into the Mount St. Helens area, um, where they had a uh, <coughs> excuse me a 2.2 earthquake. You can see that earthquake right there, negative on the kilometer depth as well. Kind of strange, but uh, we'll check out that 2.2 here in a minute when we look at the volcanic seismicity uh, maps or graphs. Also, prior to that 2.2, a 1.7 striking a distance away from Mount St. Helens. This one pretty deep at about 15 kilometers. Other than that, not a whole lot of movement into the Pacific Northwest. Uh, checking out the Northern California area, as I mentioned, Northern California pretty quiet. In fact, the majority of even parts of uh, getting down to Southern California looks pretty quiet as well. Diminishing earthquake activity uh, through the Antelope Valley area, Long Valley Super Volcano. Uh, the only two noticeable regions showing a little uptick is this swarming northwest of the Tonopah region. You can see some significant swarming and earthquake activity there. Uh, nothing significant. Uh, looks like a 2.4 uh, popped off within the last hour. Also some movement at the Ridgecrest area, the fracture zones of the earthquakes on the July 4th, July 5th, 2019, when they had those uh, series of uh, somewhat larger earthquakes. See some swarming, pretty much stretching from the entire rupture area from the north to the south. Uh, so kind of watching that region as well. Uh, Southern California, south of the uh, Los Angeles area, San Jacinto Fault area shown some movement, but uh, for the most part, some heightened earthquake activity kicking up now within the last hour um, in Tonopah and also the Ridgecrest region. Uh, swarm of movement up through the Utah area. You can see that activity as well on that map. And up here in the Montana region, we had a, had a, a 3.4 kickoff. You can see that 3.4 near Boulder, Montana, 10 kilometers. Looks like they had a couple small aftershocks as well. 1.2 and a 1.7, 10 kilometers for the depth of the 3.4. Some movement around uh, Yellowstone. Nothing significant, but uh, nonetheless, there's some activity kicking up there. Let's go ahead and show you the Yellowstone map here real quick. Uh, if I can get that to pop up, there we go. See some activity around the Maple Creek region. This right here is the, the earthquake that struck in the Montana region. 3.4. You look at the timestamp here, 0.9.19.22, and you look at the timestamp over here, uh, is way right there, 0.9.19. That's going to be this one right here. Uh, so that earthquake struck in Montana showed up pretty significantly on the Yellowstone stations. As far as localized earthquake activity goes, there is some. Uh, you see this one right here, pretty localized to the uh, location of the seismograph. Also a couple small microquakes following that Montana quake. And it looks like over the past few hours, just a couple spotty ones in the vicinity of Maple Creek. As we move over here uh, towards the North Junction area, you can see a little bit more in the way of localized earthquake activity. Every single one of these spikes here is indeed localized to the seismograph location. And uh, there's the, once again, the earthquake in Montana showing up on this one as well. Uh, of course, a little bit further away, uh, not much, but is a little bit further away as far as distance goes. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of microquakes kicking off on this map. You can see it pretty significantly here. Uh, nothing big, just some microquakes. Um, but other than that, it kind of disappears as you look at the, uh, 
the other graphs around the location of Norris Junction telling me that it is indeed localized to that station. Uh, other than that, not a whole lot going on as far as Yellowstone activity goes. Let's look at the USGS map uh, once again. See Oklahoma getting in on some activity as well today. Had a 3.0 near Jefferson, Oklahoma. Not for sure exactly what's out there in the way of fracking, but uh, I can only assume that there probably is some fracking oper uh, operations going on out there. Let's see what we got out there in the beautiful state of Oklahoma. Now well, this one here, this 3.0, kind of out there in the creek or the creek. 7.4 kilometers. I don't see any specific. Uh, see what we got? Those are farmhouses there. I don't really see any. Um, maybe down here it looks like. <clears throat> maybe not though. Those kind of look like farmhouses. Uh, so I don't see a whole lot of it, um, fracking operations within this regions here. But of course Oklahoma can and will get earthquakes. Uh, let's jump back off there. Go back to the terrain model real quick. As we zoom out, <clears throat> no movement around the New Madrid area. Looking pretty quiet in that region. Eastern areas as well of the country, pretty quiet. Also uh, a little bit of movement around the Pecos, Texas area. Nothing significant, just a couple small uh, microquakes. And um, let's see here, let me get rid of that. And a little earthquake out southeast of San Antonio around the, uh, what is that, Nordheim? Hopefully that is the correct pronunciation there. 2.3. As we look at the rest of the Pacific Plate, the Gulf of Alaska, uh, just just shy of the subduction zone here. Seen a little, little bit of uptick, including a 4.0. And uh, just recently, within the last hour, a 3.4 within the same vicinity. So might want to watch this area here along the subduction zone once we start seeing some uh, surface quaking right out here right before the subduction zone. That's kind of a, a telltale story of potential large-scale movement. Uh, so we're watching that pretty closely. Another 4.4 deep into the subduction zone over to the uh, Lucian Islands area at uh, 34 kilometers. Little earthquake, 3.9 near Tokyo 73 kilometers pretty deep into the Japan Trench also a little bit of movement down through the Philippine area south of the Philippines 5.2 that one's pretty deep there 175 kilometers and some further deep movement of course in this area of the Fiji Islands one right smack dab on the trench 5.5 here's the deep one 536 kilometers folks for the 4.6 that is a deep one South America, what's going on here? Let's check out the South Sandwich Islands real quick here. Uh, looks like a couple fours relatively deep within into the uh, Japan tr or the uh, South Sandwich Trench, 45 kilometers for uh, the 4.9. Up here in the South America region, kind of watching this area as well, seeing a pair of earthquakes, 4.4, uh, and uh, another one, another 4.4, relatively deep there, 200 kilometers almost for that 4.4. And then the other one, a little bit more shallower, into the uh, Peru Chile Trench subduction zone there as well. Up here to the north, a little bit more recent quake. We had a 5.2, but still down dip of this trench area at 72 kilometers. Uh, and also some activity around the, well, the Mediterranean Sea region, well up north, Albania area. And also it looks like uh, near Italy had a 4.2 earthquake striking. Looking off the coast here is Spain, 4.1 within the last 24 hours of earthquake activity. Let's check out the volcanic seismicity map here at Mount, not Mount Hood. Let's go back to Mount uh, St. Helens and see what the graphs look like. There is the 2.2 that struck. It's the last earthquake that looks like uh, has been registered there. Check out these seismograph stations. It's a little distance away from the summit of Mount St. Helens, but still within the vicinity of the volcano. Pretty close, actually, but not quite 
right smack dab at the summit. See if we can get these to pop up. Sometimes they don't load. Sometimes hover over seismograph for time. Okay, the invisible seismograph. Let's see if we can pick up uh, a couple other stations here. Do 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 do. Let's see here. I don't think that one's going to work either. Nope. Nope or nope. -er. Let's see if we can get. I uh, just kind of want to see what we can pick up here. Wow. What do we got going on? It's just some. I think that one's offline. Um, let's see about this one up here. Not for sure what's going on. Sometimes these things load, sometimes they don't. Kind of kind of a little on the odd side. <clears throat> there we go. That one did pop up. There is the what is that? 2220 is the time on that. We can go back over here any which way, the USGS or another uh, station to be able to see exactly when that 2.2 struck. Looks like 1659 UTC time for that 2.2. So that wouldn't. Let's see what we got. 1659. That would not be it. 1659 would be over here somewhere. Hmm, that's kind of odd. I have to go back and check that unless there's some issue going on with the uh, time. But uh, definitely a localized earthquake there in the vicinity of. Mount St. Helens. What else we got, folks? Uh, kind of a big picture going on with the potential for solar weather activity tonight and tomorrow night. Looks like uh, a great chance of seeing some uh, auroras kick down even to the mid latitudes. Looks like. Uh, what do we got here? October 30th. That's going to be early morning hours. There's a detailed forecast right here that Solar Ham puts out. There's a UTC time. Looks like we're going to get a blast on uh, October 30th, 6 to 12 in the UTC time. If you want to know the specifics of that time, better look that up in your own time zone. That'll give a little bit handy advice um, or a little bit uh, information when it comes to checking out the uh, specifics of your local time. But it could be up there, folks. It could, I mean, it could be down there, I should say, because we're looking at the potential for the auroras to uh, kick pretty low. This is all a strong three, uh, G3 storm. Uh, we got the CME headed right towards us. <clears throat> Let's see, solar wind speed, solar wind speed of near 800 km. Woo! This forecast should a G3 level storm materialize, visual aurora will likely be seen for locations as far south as 50 degrees geomagnetic latitude or beyond Oregon, Nebraska, Pennsylvania. Now, for now, we wait. Well, I'm not going to be waiting tonight, I'm going to be out there with Missy Mimi's uh, observing the low nighttime sky. Got a clear view of the northern sky from, from where I'm at here in California. Not for sure if it's going to pop this far south. There has been some models popping up recently. Um, people have been kind of sharing them on the social media platforms here. You can see the Aurora Borealis uh, potential, of course, <clears throat> into parts of Oregon. <clears throat> Excuse me, Idaho, uh, through Wyoming, Nebraska, uh, and other areas eastward. Looking like a very good chance of some... Uh, Aurora is kicking up. The green line at the bottom is where you could potentially see it very low on the horizon. And that includes parts of me here in Northern California. So I'm going to uh, check it out, see if I can at least see it later um, after midnight, I suppose, when it comes in. And uh, see if I can't get some shots of the uh, Aurora's. I, I'm probably probably wishful thinking, but you never know. This thing could be a little bit stronger, a little bit more stronger than they are forecasting when it comes to the potential of the uh, Aurora Borealis here. But if you're up here in Oregon, Idaho, you know, stretching down through these states here, you got a really good chance of seeing the Aurora Borealis tonight and tomorrow. 
Here's another image from, uh, this is from Milwaukee. The uh, National Weather Service there kind of put out this little issue. Um, this is Saturday afternoon, October 30th into Sunday morning. Uh, it looks like uh, let's see what we got here. Do, 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 do. There's a chance. I believe it's a chance tonight, too. But I'm thinking that the Saturday night one may be more intense, it looks like. These are time zones, in, or at least these times are in Central. Central time, Milwaukee. These guys are uh, strong geomagnetic storm. G3 is expected to bring roar activity as far south as Central Illinois. Strongest activity, KP Index 7, will be from... Uh, the strongest, that is, will be from 4 to 7 tomorrow with the more moderate activity KP Index 6 from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. The best viewing time for the Aurora across, across the southern Wisconsin will be right around 7 p.m. just after dark. However, clouds may impact how much parts of uh, um, southeast Wisconsin can see around 7 p.m. So this is just a uh, just a little thing I've seen for this central time zone in that area here in Northern California. Of course, you got to you know subtract uh, some time, central time, what two hours from there. But uh, either way, I'm going to be alert for the next couple nights. See if we can uh, see something kicking off. I would love to see this. It's always been like a dream of mine, uh, even to get a glimpse of it. Um, you know, low on the horizon would be pretty awesome. Uh, also, let me jump back over here to the main screen. They are forecasting still the potential. Go back over here to this, this page right here. The potential for another X flare. Look at that. 30% chance of an X flare potential in the um, solar flare threat. 2886, or is it 2887? Uh, 2887 is the one that produced the X flare, the X1 on the 28th but it looks like uh almost a guarantee of c flare 99 percent m flare 70 percent and there's that 30 percent chance of an x flare kicking off again of course anything directed anything that does kick off will be directly earth related as you can see and uh, earth directed i should say from those sunspots and the sun's starting to get pretty active 2891 here looking pretty crazy as well but the big one, the big guy here is 2887, kind of pointing right at us. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here. I will, uh, if I do catch some video tonight, or at least some uh, pictures, we'll see what happens with the Aurora. Um, I will be <clears throat> posting that on my channel. Um, if you guys happen to be in a super good location to catch the Aurora Borealis over the next couple nights, and you want to be featured here on the Earthmaster uh, update video send them to my email i know i got quite a few photos i need to go through from the past i was doing a uh, a viewer photo opportunity to be seen here on the update videos but i got super far behind but i do want to pop up um, if you guys do catch some aurora borealises over the next couple nights send them to earthmastermail at gmail.com that's my email earthmastermail at gmail.com and uh, let me know where you filmed filmed it at. You know the photos, uh, maybe what type of camera you're using and your settings, and uh, of course your name, location, and uh, maybe how far you had to look on the horizon to see the uh, aurora borealis. And uh, we'll put you guys up on the uh, update video. Once again, earthmastermail at gmail.com is the website or the uh, email to send those pictures. Hopefully, I get to see uh, some pretty awesome shots out there from you guys. Have a good night, guys. We'll catch you a little bit later. Stay safe out there. It is Friday. A lot of craziness going on out there in the world today. So I'm going to stay inside. Well, after I uh, after I have to venture out sometime, right? So i got to go out there and see if I can uh, catch those lights tonight. All right, guys. Have a good night. Peace out.